particularly pleased, I can see. I think she will relax. She's just watching us quite carefully, so I'm going to speak very quietly. There, she's relaxing. You can see her eyes blinking. She's starting to go to sleep. You can't see her. I can see her. You can see the little one, though, trying to suckle. Now, if Mum was not comfortable with us, what she'd do is start growling. And she's not growling at all. She's young, you know. I think this is, must be her first litter. Beautiful. Can you see all right there, Brian? To a degree. It's not the best. We're just going to stay here and let... Can you hear the fish eagle calling above us? There we go. Mum is just relaxing now. She wasn't as relaxed as I've seen her before. So I'm just going to let her settle before I think about uh, maybe moving forward. There, she's yawning. I know you can't see it, everyone, but I can see it. There we go. She's relaxing now. There you can see her eyes. Starting to close quietly. So let's sit here for a little while. And see what happens. I don't think those little things are going to move too much. They look like they're trying to have a bit of a suckle underneath there. Now just 14 days old. Or plus or minus 14 days old. Let me just see if I can't get a slightly better view. And I might roll forward just now. There we go. Brian, is that at all good for you? It's all right. <laughs> This is fantastic. I can see all three of them. Um, oh Brian, I don't think with your extra height there, I'm not sure that I'm going to get a better view. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just roll forward slightly. How's that, Brian? Is that fine? It's not going to, it's going to be good right now. How's that? Okay. Right, everybody, I'm going to just call this in on the radio. This is just too wonderful. Look at the tiny little things there just trying to suckle and mum hasn't sat up at all stations I have come to this position the mother is on location there is a one out of five visual um, I think we should limit it to three vehicles per drive one vehicle at a time this is just my opinion um, and there's almost no movement if you can when you get in here because the visual is isn't great and it you have to be quite close to see what's going on isn't that lovely mark i don't know what you mean by a unique spot Mike, um, yeah, you, you, you've got to be pretty close to, to get a view. Um, so just very sensitive, slow movements around here. Um, Aaron, thank you very much. You say, um, <laughs> you say that you love these cubs because they take the manliness out of me. Well, I'm not sure why. that's why I love them, but I do get your point. I was thoroughly chastised today by Geraldine for talking in baby voice 
on the drive, so you'll notice I haven't done it. Well, I nearly started doing it, but I didn't do it earlier. Geraldine, I hope you've taken note. Um, so, yes, they do completely, absolutely make me talk in in a very unmanly way. They're all suckling now. Isn't that lovely? That is just too stunning. So three little ones, no way to sex them at this stage. And they're all just suckling. I hope you can make out the detail there. But all three of them are suckling now. Oh, Michael, interesting, um, very interesting uh, comment from you. You say, with domestic cats, if you start blinking uh, with them and they start blinking in time with you, um, then it indicates that they have some sort of trust and they trust you. Uh, would the same work with lions or leopards? I would be very reticent to say yes in that particular situation. Um, I don't know. I've, you know, I have stared at lions. I've stared at them in the eye, both on foot and in vehicles, and I've seen nothing but, um, well, blankness, basically. And that's not to insult them at all, but I don't think that the level of communication that exists with the domestic cat and one of these exists. So I would, I would say no. I'm going to go with no. I don't think that the same would apply, that if that lioness started blinking in time with you, that you could, she was indicating some form of trust. I might be wrong, uh, but I don't think so. Isn't that lovely? Now, just to give you an idea of how big they are, they're about the size of a ruler. They're about... 12 inches long, each of them, from top to the end of their tails, so they are very small indeed. And they'll grow amazingly quickly, so the other ones that many of you have seen, that we saw also of the Nkuhuma Pride, they are, um, how old are they now? They're just over six weeks, they've started moving with the Pride. Yeah, well, they're not all the time, but they certainly moved from place to place with the pride and they went to that kill on Arethusa, which is a long way from here. I mean, that was a good walk for them. And they are substantially bigger than this. Almost double the size, I'd say. Catherine, I have to agree with you. You say you can't believe we're so privileged to watch these little things. I can't believe it either. I've never had this privilege before. In all my years of guiding, I've seen young lion cubs, but I've never been in a position where we've been able to view them in a den site like this. It's just, it's too special. This is why, of course, I speak in slightly babyish tones sometimes. Brian, have I, I've held it together today though, haven't I? To a degree. Yes. Much more manly today. Mm, the voice is deeper. Roof, roof. <laughs> Not sure roof, roof qualifies as manly. I'm just going to try and move that stick out of the way, everybody. How's that? Um, Cindy in Tennessee, you want to know about the Sticks Pride and if there was any update on them. They were seen yesterday, indeed, on, Ch on Chitwa Chitwa. And... There on Chitwa Chitwa. Uh, I don't know if the cubs were there, but certainly they had a female or a three or four, f three females with the Birmingham boys.
So I don't really know. Oh, look at that. This is incredible, people. This really is something special. So the Sticks, Sticks Pride Cubs I don't know about. I certainly haven't heard anything negative about them. But you see, they spend quite a lot of time on oh, Chitwa Chitwa, southern end of Cheetah Plains and onto Mala Mala. And that's why we don't see them very often. Jamie's going across to Cheetah Plains now. I don't know how, um, how well they searched Cheetah Plains this morning. I don't mean that negatively. I don't know how many people were around on Cheetah Plains this morning. Maybe they were around there. Look at their little ears moving with each suck. So, if we go back to the sensitivity of it, you can see, well I hope you can see, that we're not having an effect here. Mum looked up as we came in, she's gone back to sleep, the cubs are suckling normally, we're making no noise. Were a hyena to come across here, she'd pick it up immediately. Were there to be some form of rustling in the bushes, she'd pick that up and hear it immediately. This is why I'm talking quite quietly. And is our smell affecting them? I don't believe so. I'm not sure how much they rely on smell when they are in a position like this. Probably a little bit. So that could be the only thing I suspect that we could say was maybe compromising the sensitivity of the situation. We're not going to be here for long, probably only another three or four minutes, and then we'll move out. Hmm. Oh, look. Oh, dear, I did it. Bad luck. Second time. Sorry about that. It's difficult to be manly around them, you know, Brian. I do. <laughs> and Brian and I, of course, you know, we're doubly unmanly because as soon as it gets vaguely cold, we put jerseys on, which is very unmanly, isn't it, Brian? Mm. Least manly. It's the least manly thing you can do. Susan, a nice question from you about whether or not the lionesses ever go into, um, come into the den site before the mother's ready to introduce them to the pride. Yes, sometimes, and certainly we only found this den site because there were other lions around here. Jamie was following the lions trying to kill a buffalo very close to here a few nights ago. And that is the only reason that we know they're here. So absolutely it does happen. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, she doesn't really mind. She would happily introduce them to the pride if the pride was here. The only reason she doesn't kind of introduce them or make them move with the pride earlier is because it's difficult for them to move with the pride. They're not big enough yet to be able to walk on their own properly. So lovely trying to take a picture but it's hopeless through all that bush. <laughs> 